السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ پیس اینڈ بلیسنگس ٹو آل آف یو لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹل مین ویلکم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم آئی سیک ریفیوج وت اللہ فرام دا شیطان دا اسٹون بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دا نیم آف اللہ موسٹ کریشیس موسٹ مرسیفل دا ٹاپک از واٹ القرآن سیز اباؤٹ فاحشہ ٹرانسلیٹڈ ایز آپسنیٹی دس ورڈ فاحشہ ہیز اکرڈ ان دا قرآن مینی پلیسز اینڈ دا ٹرانسلیشن آئی ہیو گیون ون ورڈ از آپسنیٹی بٹ اف وی گو ان ٹو ڈیٹیل دی میننگ دا ورڈ اٹ سیلف دی آپسنیٹی آئی وڈ لائک ٹو گیو یو فردر میننگ آف دیٹ ورڈ اٹ از اٹ انکلوڈس shameful acts shameful acts where a person is shameful or indecent where the act is indecent that cannot be done in a general public that is indecent the word includes that meaning itself and then is fornication adultery homosexuality lust lewd uh pornography this all these words that i'm using covers in the word obscenity it contains the meanings and the shades of all these words i've used and in the quran the essence of this word you will when i read the ayats you will find the meaning and the essence of these word and one more word i forgot and that is incest to commit adultery or fornication between a mother and a son or sister or a brother father and a daughter that is obscene that is also fahisha in the quran so first these are the meanings that i gave to you the second word the uh, word arabic word occurs in the quran is zina zina is an sexual act between non married people which means fornication or adultery specifically the word only zina but the faisha the word obscene includes everything then there is a one word is sa or su or sayyat meaning badness ill or hurts sayyat these words i am telling you because these word will occur in our lecture and they are more uh, very uh, important for us to know that then there is a word zam dunu danaba sin guilt whenever our psyche or the personality of human beings do commit such certain acts that we refer to a person gets a guilt or you can say sin a guilt of doing a wrong act that is contained in a human being when he commits an act a shameful act or obscene act you, you that's that's how you get uh, guilt in in your personality then there is a word i told you say yeah then what happens to you that personality he becomes bad he becomes bad a guilt occurred in his personality that is zam or a sin as a uh, he's committed a sin by performing these obscene acts and then he becomes a bad person this is how they are interlinked whenever a person commits an obscene act he gets a guilt and he becomes bad so that is why i am telling you these meanings the, the, what is the process of if a person comes uh, commits this act how it affects his personality and how because most of the people in the in the world are committing wrong acts they are committing obscene acts how to get cure from these acts or ask allah for forgiveness this is uh, the the lecture you're going to hear in short i have described <clears throat> coming to the ayats of the quran if you open the first page that is first surah I'll discuss is Al Isra 17 and the ayah is 32. <clears throat> Wa 
ولا تقرب الزنا انه كان فاحشا وساء سبيلا and you do not commit or do not come near to fornication adultery surely it is an obscenity and a way to badness the first ayah this is a mahkamah mahkam ayah meaning governing ayah by virtue we have to govern our psyche that allah said do not go near to zina or fornication or adultery surely it is a fahisha it is an obsceni obscenity it's a shameful act do not go near to that and a way of badness that is how a person become bad this small verse is very important to understand our lecture if in the in the bible it is mentioned do not commit adultery do not commit adultery i'm just uh, uh, ask you to compare it in the quran it said do not go near to zina or fornication and once a person if say if i say do not commit that means i can go near but i cannot i will not commit adultery so quran is specifically telling you anything that leads to fornication or leads to this adultery do not go near by reading books pornographic books or magazines anything or communication between you know guys she is my friend or he is my friend we are talking on phone we are writing letters or emails anything which leads to fornication allah forbid you for that and it says it leads to badness it said do not go near zina do not go near zina means do not use any means in the result at the result is that you may commit fornication so everything is forbidden and if it is a fahisha it's an indecent act or obscenity and it's a way to badness if you go near to fahisha or obscenity you will start committing all the wrongs or a road to badness all the references in the quran which allah forbids us to do you will have the courage to do those all wrong things because fahisha zina is a very important factor in human psyche to govern his psychology personality if you do not go near if you go near that means you are leading yourself to do all the corrupt things badness that are described in the quran or in the world then you become a bad person because you have taken the courage to go near to zina so allah is ask is commanding us ordering us to govern our psychology that do not go near so that you may not commit this obscene act and then finally it will be a road to badness then you will be intending to do more bad this is one order of the quranic ayah then what is further fahisha the other fahisha mentions surah an-nisa 4 and ayah 22 wala tanjihu ma nakaha aba'ukum min an-nisa illa ma qad salaf innahu kana fahishatan wa maqta wa sa'a sabila and you do not marry from women to whom your fathers married except without doubt whatever is past surely it is an obscenity and a hateful and a way to badness <clears throat> the concept here in this ayah that do not marry your women whom your fathers married it will be a fahisha and a obscenity a shameful act that you can say as incest in english committing a sexual act between blood relation this is incest 
so do not marry whom your father's married woman whom your father's married this is nikah this is marrying it's an obscenity act obscenity or a shameful act if suppose a person has done it consciously or unconsciously married the the mother uh, married the mother it says without doubt whatever is past if you have committed that you do, you were not a muslim you were not a believer and you were living in a certain area or a culture where a person has married the mother so allah is saying well, whatever is done is past do not do it again so important fact point here is that you don't have to give divorce your mother at that time you keep living what because you may have children so in that context you don't have to so that is say allah said without the whatever is past if you have done in the past do not do it again but let the system run in the in the quran that allah has forbid us to marry there's a, another ayah where it says whom you are allowed to marry and whom you are allowed not to marry the whole people or, or relations are mentioned that so if somebody has committed wrong in that in the past and in the past of his life and now he comes to know that he has done it from the ayahs of the quran he may not uh, divorce the relations what you have because maybe children and the whole family system is going on so allah said whatever is past is past but not do it in the future allah will forgive you <clears throat> and this committing this act of marrying the mother of your father is also a faisha faisha means i have told you an obscenity and of all the words that i included shameful act and it is a way to badness again it's a hateful thing and a, a way to badness that means if you have keep involving in this kind of act then you are going to do all the wrongs you will have the courage to do more wrongs bad things in life which allah has forbid you to do so so that is why this is very important that we the, the, this aspect of uh, zina and the marrying the mother and uh, zina and faisha and adultery lecture has been delivered it is very wrong because it opens the road to other evil bad things we can think of now <clears throat> further in surah nu 24 and ayah 19 ان الذين يحبون ان تشيع الفاحشة في الذين امنوا لهم عذاب اليم في الدنيا والاخرة والله يعلم وانتم لا تعلمون surely those who love to publish circulate the obscenity in those who believe for them is a painful punishment in this life and the hereafter and allah knows and you do not know you can see in the world that people nowadays this internet is available that people are promoting pornography tashi al fahisha tashi al fahisha means they want to circulate or publish promote the fahisha obscene acts all over the world you can see that and this is done in the believers so allah said for them is a painful punishment and allah knows that you do not because you are trying to stir the the shaitan wants to stir the feelings among the men and the boys and the girls young boys and the girls so they can see they can view this this circulation that has been done among the muslims or the believers this faisha act or this adultery act performed and you, you know this uh the shaitan leads you to you are attracted towards it that is why allah says surely those who love to publish then circulate the obscenity faisha in the believers for them is a painful punishment in this life and the hereafter and allah knows and you do not know it's going on that if you are going to do the such thing you will be punished in this world and the hereafter so even the circulation of the obscenity is forbidden 
obscene acts and forbidden. This is, is, is mentioned in the Quran. Now, <clears throat> now this ayah that I'm going to read is very, very important to understand the men and women psychological behavior towards life. And what is the what are the adornment provided by Allah for mankind in this world? What are the adornments that are provided from Allah to mankind, men and women to live in this world? You will note and, and you will be surprised to understand when I'm going to read this, inshallah. Surah Ali Imran 3 and Ayah 14. Zuyina linasi hubbu shahawati mina nisai wal banina wal kanati il mukantarati mina dhabi wal fidda wal khaili il musawamati wal an am wal hath dhalika mata'ul hayati dunya wallahu indahu husnul maab. Adornment for people is the love of sensual desires from women and sons and heaped up heaps of gold and silver and marked horses and cattle and cultivated land that is the enjoyment of the worldly life and the beautiful resort is near Allah in the Quran the word nas is used for both men and women when Allah says, Ya ayyuan nas, He is referring to both men and women. Nas. When He used the word Rijal, Rijal, it specifies men. If I said these are all men sitting, that means they are Rijal. Man is Rujul, plural is Rijal. Nisa, Imrat, women. But in, in, if, you, if you use in combination, men and women both in combination, it is always in a masculine gender in the Quran and in generally in all languages of the world. When we speak about men and women both in plural, we will not distinguish the sex. We will use a word that you all of you, all of you are sitting in the audience. Until unless I use the word women to distinguish, if I want to describe or discuss women specifically, then there is a dis distinguish and a gender is being used, a feminine gender. But if it, it is in plural, it, was, it will always be used a, a masculine gender the, in which the women are included. For example, now Linnas. The, all these things that are all this uh, mentioning is it is for both men and women both you have to listen to it very carefully Zuyina linnasi hubbu shahawat adornment for people is the love of the sensual desires what are those that we men and women our sensual desire is permitted by Allah Almighty to have the love for these 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 things. The first is the women, min nisa, and then you, we can analyze well banin and the sons, and the third is the heap and heaps of gold and silver. Men and women both would like to have these things in their possession heaps of gold and silver men and women both like to have sons both and well khaylil musawamati and marked horses meaning they are trained beautiful trained horses marked horses men and women would like to have these in their possession well, an arm and the kettles, men and women both would like to have kettles for them. 
and walhaf and that is cultivated land but the, the point we are in our lecture is the woman men and for women for both sexes listen to me very carefully for both sexes men and women for both sexes sexes woman is an adornment meaning a woman is an adornment for men woman is an adornment for women men are not adornment at all because if you look at the context it's for both sexes these are the sensual desire love and adornment men like to adore women adorn women and women also adorn women and if you analyze this the statement i've just now said whenever a beauty context has been has been uh, uh, shown on television how many women would be like to would be interested in only men would like to view this uh, beauty context men and women are both sitting and viewing that beauty and adornment of the miss world it's not only men for women also she is an adornment from you know men have do not have that insight to view a woman's beauty as women beautify as women's eyes are because there are uh, women who are who are the uh, judges among among those the women are judges to understand the look of a woman the beauty of a woman her walk and everything her sense intellect the judges are also women why so if woman is not in a woman adornment for a woman so what i'm saying is a fact that women adorn women men you understand this men can adorn women men are adorn women but women are more uh, understand the beauty of a woman because they themselves are adornment so they know more better how to what is the adornment of women they look up in a woman and they see from top to bottom their clothes their hairstyle everything they note it if they are not adornment why they are noting they don't note you what are you wearing men believe me so this is this is the if you understand this it will be easy for me to understand to tell you how the crooked psychology is also mentioned in the quran or the deviated psychology is also mentioned in the quran if a woman adorns a woman is a natural thing if the man adorns a woman is a natural thing made by allah given to all mankind both men and women now what happened if you go to the next page in surah naml 27 surah and ayah 54 walutan id qala li qaumi ata'tun al fahisha wa antum tubsirun a innakum la ta'tun ar rijala shahwatan shahwatan min duni nisa bal antum qaumun tajhalun and when lut said to his people do you come with the obscenity and have you and you have the insight surely do you come with with sensual desire to men besides women but you are ignorant people now if you if you know can note in the ayah walutun walutan it qala li qaumihi qaum also includes men and women both listen to me before i say nas includes men and women both when lut al salam peace be upon him is addressing to his people he is addressing both sexes he is not only addressing to men he is addressing to both sexes and he says ata'tun al fahisha wa antum tubsirun do you come with obscenity and you have the insight and what is that the obscenity here fahisha is described in the next verse a innakum 
لتاتون الرجال شهوتم من دون نساء that you men and women both you have the sensual desire to men besides women this is the sickness that is being prevailed in the world and this is how the confusion arises to have a sensual desire with men is a sickness is not right so lut al salam is addressing to both women and men both that do you not have the insight that you have been provided your your normal uh, it is normal to have an adornment for women but now you want to adorn men what's wrong with you men and women both are adorning or sense they are having the sensual desire for men besides women if you have the sensual desire for women it is a normal thing men and women in this aspect is not only sexual but it is i'm trying to convey it's just to adorn a man or have the uh, a man desiring for a man not physical but also otherwise is sickness and that is how in the world you can see that there are people women and men both are making this men as fancy to be adorned like hero worship in films they show men as a hero and women and men both admire men also copy men and women also try to admire that men this is a sickness going on because the natural thing was allah has given both of the sexes to adorn the women that is normal but if you go against meaning you leave out the women aside and you start have the sensual desire for men for both sexes is a sickness or ills and that is mentioned in the quran as fahisha obscenity obscenity to have that you leave up the woman and you start adorning the men or you start having sensual desire for men for women also if the women are having sensual desire for men is fahisha obscenity and men who want to have sexual desire for men is obscenity fahisha so that is why i include the word homosexuality homo does not mean only male gender to male gender homo means same sex so one of the female is behaving like a male in lesbianism but the question is again that they are looking to the other as men to 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 have this uh, sensual desire to with men is basically a fahisha or an obscenity